3D printing is a modern form of magic. Like alchemy or conjuration, it's the application of mortal will to raw material, the summoning of something from nothing. And like other forms of magic, it is not without its dangers. The spell components involved are toxic, infernal resin and alchemical cleaning compounds. The machines used for the printing itself are clunky, imprecise, and subject to a host of malfunctions. And the learning of this craft for us mortals is slow, arduous, and lined with failure, as it should be. For although it's a messy, modern form of sorcery, it's still magic. This is the story of my journey into the world of forbidden alchemy that is resin 3D printing. How did I end up here? What advice can I give you? And what results have I managed to get on my first week on this journey? Let's start out with the basics. What is the point of a 3D printer and why would you want one? Well, it's exactly what it sounds like. It's a printer that can create things for you in three dimensions. The reason to get one is quite simple. Instead of being limited by the catalog of Games Workshop or other miniatures companies, you can print anything you want. Well, almost. But still, there's a vast catalog of online creators who offer their 3D sculpts for a fraction of the price of miniatures retailers. And instead of just buying one, you get the file. You can print as many as you want, in any size you want, forever. Not to mention if you learn to sculpt in a 3D software yourself, you're only limited by your own skill and imagination. So the reason to get a 3D printer is uh, freedom. It's the ability to bake whatever baked goods you want from scratch instead of just getting to choose from the pre-made section at your local grocery store. My journey began a few months ago when Loot Studios asked if they could sponsor one of my videos. After taking a look at their product line and what they had to offer, I said, yes, of course, let's do it, but uh, can you print the miniatures for me because I don't have a printer? Their response was, what if we just buy you a printer? So Loot offered to supply me with the funds to buy a printer and everything I would need to start printing, and in exchange, I would use their models as my first test prints in a video like the one you're watching. It seemed like a fair deal to me, and I was already on the cusp of buying a resin printer myself, so I said yes. If you've never heard of Loot Studios before, they're one of these online subscription services that gives you pre-supported models to print on your 3D printer every month. Personally, I'm a big fan of their art style and general vibe of their products, but I think they have an especially high value if you run a D&D campaign. Every month you get a bundle of monsters, NPCs, player characters, and even little terrain bits, which I'm especially a fan of, all based around a certain theme. So it's really easy to incorporate into an ongoing campaign. Anyway, I'm a fan of their products, so thank you so much, Loot, for sponsoring this video. And if you want to check it out, I have an affiliate link for them down below in the description. In the weeks leading up to actually printing, I spent a ton of time on YouTube researching the topic of resin printing. Every video seemed to have slightly different information, so I watched as many as I could in an attempt to absorb as much information as I could to try to gain a consensus of what I should actually do or believe. The main lessons that I learned from this research were, number one, it's easier than it looks. Number two, don't touch the resin, and if you do, wash your skin thoroughly with soap and water. Number three, try not to breathe in the resin fumes. The jury is out on just how dangerous the fumes are, but it's generally better to not breathe them in if you can avoid it. And the most important thing that I learned from all of these videos is it's all about your workflow. So be patient, go slow, and eventually it will become routine. As I watched all these resin printing videos, I came up with a shopping list of supplies I would need and a rough process in my head of how I would approach the printing. Between advice from my friends Danny and Jeremy, as well as the people at Loot Studios themselves, I decided on this as my first printer, the Frozen Sonic Mini. While I was considering getting the 4K model, the advice that I got from several people who own both of them is that the 4K is a bit more trouble than it's worth, and it's better to start with the base model. 
After doing some research on how messy the cleanup process can be, I decided it was worth it to also buy this second machine called a wash and cure machine. For each of the other supplies, I'll be talking about it as it comes up in the process of the video, but if you want a full list of supplies, as always, Amazon affiliate links are down below in the description. Once I had everything in hand, I needed a messy workspace separate from my clean workspace. So I didn't accidentally get resin on my computer or my painting station or anything else. So I created a separate space in the corner of the studio for this task. I put the printer as well as the wash and cure machine right in front of the window to help vent the fumes. And I've even got my airbrush spray booth set up right next to it so I can point it at the printer and get even more ventilation if I want to. If you do get your own printer, I would make sure to have a separate space for it and only use it in a well-ventilated area. I'm in an apartment, so this was the best I could do right now, but ideally you probably want to do this in like a garage or a basement or something. Once I had all the machines and tools set up, I removed the goo tray and leveled the printing bed. This is a pretty boring process and it's pretty easy, so I'm not going to go into detail here. We're just making sure the build plate is parallel to the LCD screen at the bottom. If you want a step-by-step -step guide on how to level your bed, just follow the instructions on your 3D printer manual and you should be fine. Before replacing the goo tray, I made sure to clean both the LCD screen and the tray itself using a microfiber cloth removing any dust or debris and being careful not to scratch anything. After this part, I spent the next few days doing test prints, learning the workflow, and generally, um, making a mess. <laughs> and instead of going through all of that in detail here, I'm going to share with you what my current workflow is after about a week of learning on these machines. So to get started, we're going to need a slicing software like Chi2Box. Chi2Box is the cutest name for a piece of software, and it's also a free program that you can import 3D files into, and it will cut them into slices for you so that the printer knows what to print. Now, usually this would be the long and boring part of the process where I show you how to make supports for 3D models and talk about how annoying it all is. But luckily, all the files from Loot Studios come pre-supported meaning you can just drag and drop them into Chi2Box and print them out. So we're just going to fill up the plate with as many 3D models as we can without them intersecting each other or the models going outside of the blue lines. And then once we're done, we click slice. After waiting for the program to slice our models, we click save, put the file onto a USB key, and now we're ready to print. After putting on a respirator, eye protection, and nitrile gloves, we're going to give the resin a nice and good shake, and then carefully fill the goo tray about one third of the way up, and then replace the cover. Once our machine is turned on, we can then plug in the USB key, select our file, and press print. It's really not more complicated than that. While our stuff is printing, we can set up our wash and cure machine. The machine has two functions, as it's implied wash and cure. And to start off, we're just going to remove all the stuff inside the container and fill it up with isopropyl alcohol. This stuff has a really strong smell, so make sure you're wearing a respirator and close up the container once you're done filling it. Once our printing is done, we can remove the prints from the printing bed using our metal scraper. And because they're all still soft, we can just rip off the supports with our fingers. We can then put everything into the basket of the washing machine and just let it wash for a few minutes. Now, another option would be we could just stick the build plate directly into the washing machine first and wash everything and then remove the supports. I'm not sure which I like better, but both are options I've been toying around with. In either case, once our supports are removed and we've removed the models from the wash, we're going to want to let them sit and dry for a little bit before curing, letting the alcohol evaporate from the models. While we're doing this, it's a good time to clean our tools and area using paper towels and isopropyl alcohol. I've got a spray bottle filled with alcohol for this purpose, and I try to keep everything as clean and resin-free as possible, 
because as I said before, we don't want any of this stuff coming into contact with our skin. Once our models are dry, we can swap the wash and cure to cure mode. And this is as easy as removing the washing tank and putting the mirror and the turntable onto the bed. Then we can put our models inside to cure. I like to cure them for a few minutes, flip them over, and then cure them for another few minutes. The way this works is the UV light inside of the machine makes the resin harden. And you'll know when they're done when you take them out and they're completely hard and no longer sticky. With some of the models that are hollow, they have these little holes in them which liquid resin might leak out of later on. So I like to let these ones sit for a little while longer to see if any liquid resin leaks out. But after that, we can move on to finishing these models up. We can finish these models in the same way we would any metal models, using a hobby knife or sanding tools to remove any little bits left over from the supports. The only difference here is that resin dust can really mess up your lungs if you breathe it in. So I like to wear a respirator for this part and then clean up the dust fully with a wet paper towel afterwards. For filling up any of these little holes, you can use either a two-part epoxy or you could be lazy like me and just use basing paste to do it. By the way, these models come with their own fully textured bases, but I opted to just use bases I already own to save a little bit of cost on resin. After this, we can prime and paint these models just like we would any other miniatures. I didn't have time to fully paint all of these, but you can see how they look after even giving them just a basic prime and zenithal highlight. I was especially impressed with the level of detail this printer was capable of given its relatively low price point. The trees and little terrain pieces especially look amazing to me, and I think I might just have to print out a couple dozen of these for an upcoming terrain project. So after a week of printing out resin miniatures, would I recommend you get a 3D resin printer? I would say it really depends on what you're looking for. It's not an essential tool and it's more like its own side hobby. It requires time, money, and physical space to create a setup. But if you like the idea of being able to print anything you want anytime you want, this might be a nice side hobby for you. For me personally, I really like it. I love the idea of if I need parts for a project, I can just find a file online, print out as many as I want in any size I want, and I can do that within 24 hours. That's, like I said in the intro, pretty magical. And I think if I've ever played an in-person role-playing game again like Dungeons & Dragons, this would be an invaluable tool for me. With services out there like Loot Studios, you can create custom monsters, NPCs, and terrain for every encounter, and I just think that's really neat. So thanks again to Loot for sponsoring this video and buying me my own 3D printing setup. If you're looking for high quality pre-supported figures with a different theme each month, I would definitely recommend their products. And if you wanna check it out, I have an affiliate link for them down below in the description. Before we go, I'd also like to thank all of our lovely patrons over on Patreon for supporting this work. Once again, I can't thank you enough, and I wouldn't be able to do this without you. If you'd like to see your name up here or get access to bonus content, you can subscribe over at patreon.com slash Dana Howell. So with all that said, maybe check out resin printing if you want to. I think it's pretty cool. And I'll see you in the next video.